So I'm Steve, I'm the CEO of Big World, and we make the game engine that's used in all of Wargaming's games, and uh, very happy to be here with Wargaming as part of Wargaming, now uh, collaborating on World of Warships. And I'm uh, Arthur, and I'm global publishing producer for World of Warships. Uh, in general, I'll be handling the, the vision and the development for World of Warships and kind of hoping to steer the ship uh, to new waters in the future. Thank you, I'm Jasper, uh, GM, General Manager for Wargaming in Asia. Um, for the past three and a half years, I've been deeply engaged in improving the brand recognition and enabling more and more communities of gamers to interact with Wargaming. It's been a pleasure so far, and, and I'm very happy to be here, and, and I'm glad that we have a lot of Australian and New Zealander players that are appreciating our titles, and we hope that we can collaborate more with, with, with you and, and with the gamers directly. So talking about Wargaming, um, what we've seen so far is that with World of Warships, we attract a lot of non-tankers. So traditionally, they're not already interacting with the wargaming ecosystem. And I think that's naturally because people in Asia, even in Australia and New Zealand, have a stronger affinity to the Navy, to naval battles, mm -hmm. just because historically we had more of those yes. rather than tank battles, right? And, uh, and I think that that is the natural draw that people in Australia and New Zealand, even Japan, Taiwan, um, what they appreciate about it is that we are enabling them to have the experience of being as one single person to be able to control a massive vehicle like a, a warship and do as much damage as you can with it. When in reality, yeah. it takes a couple of thousands or tens of thousands of people to actually yeah. man a vessel like that. So with, with regards to warships itself, I'll let Arthur talk more about it uh, from a global perspective, I guess. Yeah, so you were asking about what people can expect when they play it, when they get into the game, right? Yeah. So. It, it generally comes down what kind of a, a player you are. Obviously, it's a vehicle shooter game. So if you're a player that's generally not comfortable with this type of game, it's a, it's a shooter game that is generally very forgiving because of the nature of warships and sea travel. It's a relatively slow game where you have time to make decisions. Uh, those decisions will mostly be impactful, but not immediately. They will be impactful sometime in the future. So it, it's a kind of game that's more forgiving for you. If you're a player that is generally a hardcore player, is more comfortable with, with uh, strategic gameplay, with shooter gameplay, then it's a, a game that offers you a whole different meta-level type of thinking. Uh, where your skill is not just in aiming a reticle at an enemy and, and pressing a firing button, but is in the level of strategic choices that you make on how you move your ship, which uh, sides of the ship you expose at what time, uh, whether you should wait until the last moment to fire off your torpedoes to maximize your, your, your chances of hitting and all that sort of stuff. So these are the, the, the types of things that you can expect from the game and also lots of bullets. Yeah. We, we were lucky enough to, to, to start off with, a, with our engine being selected by Wargaming and it's how we got involved. So um, that all happened back in 2011. Uh, and so that was a while ago. So, so they had a, a very um, core, solid engine that was designed for massively multiplayer game, designed for, for matching up millions of players and making that gameplay seamless. And from there, the St. Petersburg 
technical team also took our 3D engine and made some fantastic improvements to it, focusing on uh, waves, the way waves behave, the deformation of waves, uh, all of that. Each each was an iteration on, on, on improvements so that, you know, splashes and explosions would ripple through the, for that. And all of those things um, added to to the, the overall effect. Uh, and I know... Um, Arthur can speak a bit more about the actual research of the ships themselves and the modelling of those, but from, from our perspective as well, it was a huge challenge because those models, imagine like instead of just a tank or, or in an MMORPG, a, a player character, even though they've got a lot of detail, those ships are massive and, and the commitment of wargaming is to make them as real as possible. And so they diligently you know, add so much detail. And so for us, it was a big technical challenge of these huge models with, you know, massive numbers of polygons and things to render yeah. uh, and uh, uh, it was a very interesting challenge and again the St Petersburg team as well we're working very closely with those on on uh, lots of different solutions so yeah. yeah off of that I remember when I first came to St Petersburg they were telling us about the technical side as well and they were telling us about the comparison between tank polygon sizes and, and ship polygon sizes. And they said, look at this tank. It's an HD model. It has a few thousand polygons. That's a lot. Look at this turret from the battleship. It has 20,000. Uh, and that's just the turret. Okay. For me, it's just every single game is a learning experience. So I think that's what I want to share with the rest of, of the game community is that they treat it as an adventure. You know, each experience that you get into, whether you get destroyed or you're the one who's dealing the damage, you know, treat it as an adventure because that's what it is. Uh, World of Warships Asia is where you go to, to to register and to download the game. Um, you know, we're happy that we've gotten to that point where we've developed the game to a level where it's it's highly satisfactory from a gamer's perspective to um, from our perspective in terms of battle matching, in terms of balance, in, in terms of gameplay. We've seen the game evolve from what it was years ago to what it is now. And we're very happy to say that a lot of Australians, a lot of New Zealanders, a lot of Asians are congregating and, and, and really appreciating the value of the game. So. Action stations. <laughs> <laughs>